Hello there, one and all, and welcome to episode 385 of Love at First Sent with me, Persilaise, live on YouTube. As always, thank you very much for tuning in, whether you're watching live or you're watching the recording. And I'm already thinking, am I going to regret this episode? So many comments already, and we've only just started. The first comment, I think, sets the tone because it's just DJ saying, what on earth? <laughs> and then Jeff says, it's pink soleil's time. Now, a lot of you are expressing surprise at this. Some of you are not, because I'm basically doing this because essentially you, so many of you got in touch with me saying that you did want me to do a top 10 for Barbie and Ken. So here we go. This is going to be top 10 perfumes for Barbie and Ken. Five for Barbie, five for Ken, but with a few qualifications and rules and caveats, because I, I overthought this one way, way, way more than I thought over the any of the others. But let me say hello to some more people. Stephanie's here saying, never imagined this. Well, I didn't either up until like sort of eight days ago. There are going to be a lot of super sweet things here, says DJ. Possibly, possibly. Will we be getting an Oppenheimer perfumes top 10, says Maché. Yeah, I can, I can, I can just about cope with um, an anatomically dubious toy that may or may not have set the course of feminism back by about three decades. But I, I, I draw the line at weapons of mass destruction. So I, th I think maybe we will not be having an an Oppenheimer list, before. not 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 any time soon. Anyway, um, we ask, where was that? We ask and personalize deliver. Says Lindsay. Thank you very much. Yes, Jen O says excited for this list. Henda says, pink is definitely not my colour, it sears my retina, but with Mr. P it will be bearable, hopefully. Um, and Sharon says, I'm getting movie tickets for a Barbenheimer double feature. Goodness me, is that is that going to be a thing? I suppose it'll have to be a thing, because officially they come out on the same day, don't they? The question is, which one do you watch first? Ooh, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, Shabir is saying hello. Um, so many comments. Is the curtain different or has it always been pink? This is the same curtain. It's always been the same curtain. Um, Yura says Mr. P should do a top 10 bath bomb lists um, and so on. Well, keep the comments coming. Um, got early access to Oppenheimer and Barbie, says Ken. Oh, I am jealous, particularly about the Oppenheimer. Although I am I'm, I'm going to watch the Barbie movie at some point if I can. Um, Eric says, greetings from the airport, about to fly off to Iceland. Oh, safe journey to you. Okay, so what were some of the rules and some of the caveats? We need to get going because there are 10 perfumes here. Um, so some of, the, some of the things in order to kind of narrow this, because I, I thought I, it, would, it would have been very, very easy to like walk into a shop and almost kind of, you know, in a blindfolded way, just, just take 10 things off the shelf and you would be guaranteed that most of them, if they were fairly modern releases, would be really, really sickly, sweet, sugary, fruity concoctions. And then that would have, been, would have been the end of the list. But I thought, OK, no, let, let's not do that. So the first thing is that all of the perfumes on this list are scents that I'm actually happy to endorse. You know, I may not personally wear them or I may not personally, you know, know people who wear them, but they are all scents that in one way or another, I do genuinely consider to be good perfumes um, and, and interesting perfumes. So that kind of ruled out about 80% of most modern releases. So that was one thing. Um, and then another thing that I thought was that in the in the spirit of of the world of Barbie and Barbie and Ken, they really should go they, they they really should go as pairs. The real the perfumes really ought to go as sort of his and hers perfumes. And then to take it a step further, I thought, okay, so these would be these would all be perfumes chosen by Barbie. So I had to channel my inner Barbie. And so she has picked one for herself from each of the brands, and then also from the same brand, she's picked one for Ken. So these are these are what she would like Ken to wear. Um <laughs> You can you can tell I am such a geek, right? When it comes to this sort of stuff, this this was total geek fest for me. Um, except I wasn't able to keep to that rule for one of them. There was one where I couldn't go for a his and hers pair from the same brand. Um, but I think you will forgive me because there was one perfume that had to be included. And then finally, um, did you ever think ever think you'd say that sentence, Mister P? Says Maudlin. Which one? <laughs> Do I say what perfume would Barbie want Ken to wear? No, no, I didn't. Um, 
And the other thing as well is that they all needed to be from pretty much mainstream brands. I, th I thought Barbie is probably not going to go niche, although maybe whatever Barbie is at the end of the Greta Gerwig film, maybe she would go for niche. I don't know. But these are the, these are all, oh, channeling my inner Barbie. No, no, no. I, I absolutely did not ever think I would say channeling my inner Barbie. Um, so the, these are all these are all very much high street, mainstream high profile brands. One, I suppose it would be seen as being a little bit more independent, but it's it, it's still pretty well known. Um, and so I think we should start, but in the spirit of doing this properly, now let me see if this is going to work. We are gonna have to do this. We're gonna have to properly go into the Barbie world. And so are you ready for this folks? Let's go zap. Okay, is that better? I didn't want to overdo this, but I think I think I think we needed to we needed to up the pinkness a little bit. Except I've lost sight of the chat. I have no idea um, what's going to be on this list. Says Aria. So super pink, super pink person. If 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 what you are seeing is what I am seeing, oh my goodness. Okay, now the first one that I wanted to put on the list, I haven't been able to put on the list because. I haven't got it. I, I was absolutely sure that I had a small vial of this somewhere. For, for a moment, I thought I even had like a 10 mil of this, but um, <clears throat> it seems I haven't. Because the, the very, very, very first, first perfume that came to my mind for this list was, and I wonder if any of you will agree with me, was... Um, Lipstick Rose. Frederick Mal Lipstick Rose, of course, composed by Ralph Schwieger. Um, it, it, straight away, I thought, well, Barbie would, you know, clearly choose Lipstick Rose for herself. And, and I think it is a fantastic ascend and one that never, ever, ever fails to put a smile on my face. One of the best things I think that Schwieger has done. Yes, Lipstick Rose, says Rachel. Glad you agree. It's just the most beautiful evocation of rosy lipstick with a strong, strong violet note. And it's kind of retro. It's got a very strong retro feel. It kind of channels the 50s. And Barbie was launched by Mattel in 1959. So it's just perfect. It's the most perfect one. But I haven't got it here with me to smell. But that's the kind of, that's the sort of uber scent for this list. Okay, so we're going to say that that takes pride of place. That's the obvious one. Lipstick Rose is a kind of given and then we'll do 10 more. And if you haven't smelled Lipstick Rose, the next time you go past a Frederick Mal counter, you really, really must. Um, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It, it, it is perfect. It's got a sense of humor, um, but it also somehow manages to be sassy and sophisticated. And as far as those lipstick, violet and rose type scents go, it, it, is, it is probably unbeatable. And I don't know why I haven't got it in my collection. I'm pretty sure I did. And I wonder if Madame Persolaise or somebody helped themselves to it or something. I can say that because I know she doesn't watch these videos. She's definitely not going to watch this one with this super pink. Actually, I quite like this color. I now, I now, I now wish this shirt was that color. I don't wish my face was that color, but never mind. Um... Tamara says, my first thought would be synthetic jungle, but only for jungle Barbie. Oh, the, um, the, the thing is as well that I thought when making this list, I thought of all of the lists I've made, I bet this is going to be in some ways the most controversial because everybody's going to have their ideas as to which Barbie we should have gone for, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, just feel free to send in your contributions. Barbie herself is a, is a very, very controversial and complex toy and concept and cultural phenomenon because we all know everything that has been written and said about the fact that you know in some ways she's sort of the worst toy out there for girls for children but also in other ways you know when you actually really start delving into the history of Barbie you find out that Barbie became president in Barbie world um, some time ago. The US has yet to have a female president. Barbie became an astronaut before a woman was sent into space, etc., etc. So I, I don't know. It, it's a complex picture. We need to get going because it's been nearly 10 minutes. So I thought we need to have a kind of retro feeling um, lipstick and rose type scent. Um, so... Um, let us go to 2015, although this is very, very definitely channeling the 50s as well. From Monsieur Olivier Polge for Chanel, this is Misia. I know it's a scent that lots and lots of you out there love. By the way, in case you're wondering, this is the EDT. I think I'm right in saying that this was the last of the exclusives that existed as an EDT before they converted all of them to EDPs. So here we go. Let's label the first blotter. Um, 
Misia, of course, is named after one of Gabrielle Chanel's good friends. Um, oh, and the comment, the comments have gone quiet. You're all wondering whether whether you agree with this or not. Um, got some leather in there, that says Pradeep. Yes, because, you know, it, it, it channels the 50s. Um, Eric says, I definitely think you would have picked Drôle de Rose, a powder puff pink scent. Um, Angie says, the first time I smelled Holy Peony Batman, it reminded me of a rose-scented Barbie I got for Christmas as a child. That that nearly, nearly, nearly made this cut, Holy Peony. Um so you can all now start thinking of what the counterpart Chanel is going to be. So, but let's smell Misia. Oh, Maché says, Misia is the only exclusive I cannot stand. So maybe that's a good choice for this list. Um, I thought you found Misia challenging, says Sam. Well, I kind of do, but I think it's right for this list. And I do think it's interesting. It's, I think, I think why I might have preferred to have included Lipstick Rose here. Well, although, as I say, Lipstick Rose is in like position above one, and these are, this is the remaining <clears throat> 10. Um, this is, this is heavier and sort of weightier and more leathery and sheep-like uh, than, than Lipstick Rose, but it is still a, quite a kind of brightly, vividly coloured rose and violet, quite sticky. Um, it's definitely got that kind of Parma violet feel in there as well. Um, and in inverted commas, feminine in 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 a sort of retro, old-fashioned way. You know, this is this is very much the scent of those sorts of um, wasted dresses with the sort of um, flared uh, skirts. So I have I have no idea how to describe clothes. Okay, so somebody's going to tell me what sort of um, what sort of dress I mean. Barbie would wear Ariana Grande cloud, says Aria. Well, she may well do. Eric says, I love Misia, but I think I'm very hyposmic to violets, very quiet on me. Ah, interesting. Um, Londe says, uh, Diagilev, Joseph Sert, and Coco Chanel would not agree, although, yes, she was sort of an it girl. Well, there you go. There's going to be so much disagreement here. Um, and Omar says, Le Lyon is my guess for the counterpart scent. Okay, I can now reveal that it's not Le Lyon. So this is, I've got, I've got here as a kind of inspiration on my tablet, a few sort of the, of the stills from the, the, the Greta Gerwig film. Um, and, and it's, it's, it's very, very much, I think that this is, this, this is the smell of it, you know, really, really bright, vivid pinks and blues and greens, big smiles, um, bleached blonde hair, um, for both Ryan Gosling and Margot Robbie, it looks like, um, and, it, and it's, it, it's also fun. It's also fun. So now let's do the male counterpart. And Lindsay, you guess correctly, because for the male one from 2016, also by Olivier Polge, I thought that when she's in Chanel mode, Barbie would like Ken to wear boy. By the way, I'm speaking as though Barbie and Ken are in a relationship. But as part of the research that I conducted for this video, oh yes, I discovered that actually they are no longer in a relationship and they are now just good friends and next door neighbors. I also found out that for a while, um, Barbie had a thing with an Australian surfer. I had, I had no idea about any of this. I thought, I thought they were in a, you know, long lasting monogamous Barbie and Ken relationship. I had no idea that Australian um, surfers were involved. Anyway, this is Boy, which regular viewers will know I really, really love. Um, Sharon says, Barbie dolls allowed me to experience glamour and fashion. Loved them and love this video. Interesting. By the way, if you are enjoying this video, please do give it a thumbs up. It really, really helps with the, the, the channel, you know, being spread around, spread around, being promoted by the YouTube algorithm. Um, ah, boy, Boy is... Boy is really, really, really good. So Boy is probably one of the gentlest, most delicate, most tender um, Chanel perfumes uh, ever released. It is, it is named, <clears throat> Boy was the nickname of the, the, the man who I think is now generally considered to have been Chanel's, uh, the, the love of her life, Gabrielle Chanel's love of her life, but he was killed um, in, a, in, a, in a car crash, I believe. Um, and 
so I guess this is a kind of idealized male scent, but with the emphasis on, as I say, tenderness. There's not there's nothing aggressive here, there's nothing confrontational. It it is, it is in in in, in many ways in terms of its structure, uh, an old-fashioned fougere in the sense that it's got a beautifully judged herbal note, a really, really nicely done um, lavender aspect, very, very, very gently floral, something, again, everything is gentle, so it's a very delicately mossy in the base, something woody running through the spine. Um, but it's it's just it's just heavenly. It, it is really, really good. And this is now yeah, this is the EDP because I think I think from boy onwards they were they were all EDPs, although somebody will correct me if I'm wrong. Bought boy for myself and love it, says Dolores. Um, Barbie was the domain of the girly girls down the street, says Tamara. I never had one. Ken was a bit cooler in my eyes. Ah, interesting. By the way, do share your Barbie stories as well. I'd be interested to know what what's kind of Barbie stories are out there. Um Rachel says, sounds really, really lovely. You're making me want to pull out my bottle of boy. Well, do it. A good sidekick to Misia, says Maudlin. Thank you very much. And JJ, oh, by the way, hello, JJ, says, would we argue that boy is really worth its price point? I still have yet to sample it. Ah, oh, no, we can't get into that into this video today. T -t today. Today, we've got to be in happy Greta Gerwig land where everything is pink and the skies are endlessly blue. Um, Barbie is so iconic, says Kate. And I think I would say in the hands of Greta Gerwig, Barbie is also going to be very ironic, um, or at least I'm hoping she's going to be very ironic. So we have done our two. Um, let's move a few things aside here. Where are we going to go next? Okay, let's go next to the one that is in uh, the thumbnail. So a lot of you will have guessed what it is, uh, but maybe you may not have spotted which version it is. Um, we we had to have something that is unabashedly and unashamedly sweet fruity. Um, but if you're going to do sweet fruity, I think this is the way to do it. I think Garlin's uh, Petite Robe Noire, Little Black Dress, is absolutely the way to do it. Um, I think some brands have gone and made this type of scent overly sickly sweet. The Garlin, says Rachel. Um, La Petite Robe Noire has an interesting kind of story because it was born at different times, depending on how far you look. But um, I remember in, in around about 2009, there was a La Petite Robe Noire that came out that was credited to Delphine Gelk. And I think there was even then a La Petite Robe Noire 2, which was a, a very different sort of green scent, if memory serves. But then it was kind of reborn in 2012 and credited to Thierry Vasser and that that was the um that the, that was that was the sort of a black cherry um sweet almond sugar explosion scent that we now know with the um uh, with the animated uh, ad campaign featuring the uh, these boots are made for walking right and it's been a huge, huge, huge success for Garlin, which is really, really pleasing because it's a brand that, you know, I, I think deserves success because um, even if their success comes from something ultimately a little bit frivolous like Petite Robe Noire, what it means is that they can create the sorts of scents that maybe the likes of you and I would find a little bit more interesting. Loads and loads of flankers. And this particular flanker is from 2014. And this is the, what was, the, what did they call this one? The Eau de Parfum Couture. Um, and I didn't pick this this one for any particular reason, really. I think I wanted to go for an EDP because they tend to be a little bit more substantial. And also I had it to hand. So I think the original unflankered um, Petite Robe Noir would do just as well. I also quite like the extra. I've got a little bit of the extra. The extra is like sort of surprisingly sophisticated. But let's have a spray of this. One of my nieces, this is still her favorite, together with uh, Coco Mademoiselle. Um, Catching my first life, says H. Schaffer. So excited and looking forward to your text. Gosh, this is maybe not the best video to have as the first live that you watch. But anyway. Um, so here we are. And yeah, it, it, is, it, is, it is really, really sugary. Another one, another one that I nearly included, um, do you remember, this is now going back, I would have, I don't know, 12, 11 years, was Prada Candy by Daniela Andrie. But I don't know um, if that is still made. And also, I couldn't really think of a suitable male counterpart to it. 
Uh, but if you were going to do caramelized sugar, Prada candy was brilliant because it, it felt so real. Um, don't tell me that Ken wears Abbey Rouge, says Sebastian. No, I'm not going to tell you that Ken wears Abbey Rouge. Rachel says, I can totally see Barbie as a Garland girl. Um, let's, um, let's talk about the scent a little bit more. So yes, it's, it's rose, a very, very, very definite rosy note, but the fruitier aspects of the rose have been brought out thanks to this um, black cherry note. But I think the reason why um, I can recommend it is that it's not overly sweet. You know, the, the sillage of this is super sugary, but there is substance here. There's something, again, maybe a touch leathery in the base or patchouli-like, you know, the, the, which, which starts taking it into, dare I say it, um, sheep territories. I always thought, um, I always thought that there was a link between this and Thierry Vasseur's Idil for Garlin. And I've also always thought that Idil was a little bit underrated, but maybe it just came out at the wrong time, or maybe it was a little bit too old fashioned when it came out. But it was almost as though he took the kind of sheep sensibility of Idil and channeled it into the work on Petit Rove Noir. Um, and, and it's fun. It is really, really fun. So what are people saying for the Ken counterpart? Um, Ideal Cologne, very cool, says Mika Shoemaker. Ooh, you're close. That Garlin Vanilla, says Rachel. Thank you very much for saying vanilla. I did not say vanilla. Um, Sharon says, I can totally see Barbie having Garlin in her perfume collection. Ken wears L'Omideal EDT. Well, funny you should say that, because actually I'm going to say L'Omideal EDP. But it had to be Lomideal because for, for Barbie, Ken is the ideal, well, he was the ideal guy. Now I find out that they're not actually in a relationship, but maybe she's kind of still secretly, I was going to say lusting after him, but that would be really, really wrong. So she's secretly whatever it is that girls, dolls do for, oh, I don't know. Oh, this is, this. anyway. Lomideal, um, eau de parfum. And this came out in 2016. The EDT came out in 2014. Um, Thierry Vasser create, uh, credited as the creator. And I remember saying at the time, and I stand by this, and this is really not me damning it with faint praise, even though it may um, sound like it, but as far as the mainstream brands go, uh, the, the big high profile mainstream brands go, so the likes of Chanel, Dior, uh, YSL, Lancome, uh, D&G, Versace. Um, this is, without any question, the best of their recent masculine releases. So if you think of Bleu de Chanel or Dior Sauvage, um, whatever the YSL have done, I can't even remember, then they do ones called Lom or Om, um, Versace's Eros, Dolce & Gabbana's K, etc., etc. This is head and shoulders above those, okay? And if you and if you just want to go mainstream, if you want to go for something that's going to be readily available from a well-known brand and you want to buy it for uh, somebody who wants to wear a masculine scent, this is without any question the one to go for. <clears throat> oh, Whimsy Cat says, Barbie definitely writes multi-page journal entries about pining after Ken. Pining, thank you very much. That's a much better word. Um, this has great Kennergy, says Lindsay. I'm glad you agree. Um, and of course, it is very much a companion to Petite Robe Noir, right? Because in many ways, it is like La Petite Robe Noir, but with the almond note um, emphasized, the rose toned down, the woodiness brought out, the kind of coumarin like aspect brought out. Um, and it's good. It you know it it is a good piece of work, and and I wish it had been more successful. I don't think it achieved quite the same success as La Petite Robe Noire, and not the same success as you know Dior Sauvage. But then for Sauvage, they got Mr. Johnny Depp and 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 Bleu de Chanel. Well, I, I I still don't understand why that was as successful as it was. Um, this 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 needs to be this this deserved to be more successful. Um, Pavitra says, I hope there's a perfume pairing themed to the she's everything, he's just Ken meme. That's really good. I've seen that poster. That is a fantastic tagline for a poster. But no, I don't think there is anything that goes with this. I don't know. I don't know. Well, maybe there's one that you could think of in that way, but I'll let you figure that one out for yourselves. 
Um, I agree this is a more perfectly matched Garlin pair, says Jen O. Oh, glad you agree. And I'm just enjoying smelling this, actually. There's something in this EDP, there's something a little bit kind of peppery and sharp and almost like red currant like something tart. Um, I think what I enjoyed um, in the preparation for this video is that it really made me start thinking of the kinds of perfumes that I don't normally include in videos and made me think, well, I should wear these more often, you know, I should wear this more often, I should wear, well, certainly one of the ones that's coming up I really, really like, and I included it in um, the, my list of the best perfumes of the year when it when it came out, but I can't remember the last time I wore it, and it's, it's a real shame. Um, so we need to get going because it's 25 minutes and I've only done four. Um, let's go to, okay. Now, another type of scent that I thought Barbie absolutely would want to include is something tropical, something beach-like. Um, I thought of the Garlin terracotta, you know, that kind of thing, but I thought, okay, no, we can't have another Garlin. Then I thought of Estee Lauder's Bronze Goddess, uh, but I couldn't think of a male counterpart for the Estee Lauder, and I think actually Lauder now produce very, very few of their masculine scents. Malibu Barbie, says Maudlin. Um, well, kind of. <laughs> I think Malibu probably actually is very, very de definitely in keeping with the vibe of, of this perfume. From 2006, composed by Camille Goutal and Isabelle Doyen. Oh, Michelle, well done. You've gone for Songe. It is, in fact, Songe. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. You saw what my thinking was there. This is the EDP of Songe, but you could have gone for the EDT as well. So you need to now start thinking of the um, Goutal male counterpart. Songe perfect, says Rachel. Um, let's have a spray. I'm impressed you figured that one out. Really, really impressed. Maybe it's because you know me so well and you, you know what I've got in the collection. Although this is, um, this is, this is uh, stolen from Madame Persilaise's collection. Is that going to work there? Let's pop that there. Um, Luciana says, this is definitely the best channel on YouTube. <laughs> Thank you very much, but not for much longer, right? Bersalais, I suspect you are much classier than Barbie, says Tamara. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I can do trashy. Um, anyway, let's... Um, oh, can we have a top 10 list for a G.I. Joe next, says Time to Ma... No, I don't know enough about G.I. Joe. He-Man? Now, that would be another story. So let's see if they're going to do another Masters of the Universe movie. Aude Adrienne says Mika Schumer. Oh, all will be revealed soon, but let's smell Songe. Now, Songe, again, really, really beautiful um, composition. If you want something that has got that suntan lotion, tropical, um, tiara, jasmine, buttery, biscuity, solar feel to it, then you absolutely cannot do better than Songe. Um, it's... It's really, really sun-filled. And do you remember, do you remember the advert for Estee Lauder's Beyond Paradise? The one that featured a certain American pop star whose name escapes me at the moment. If you haven't seen it, check out the advert. It was directed by Luc Besson because it's the colors and the feel of that advert with these sort of neon colored flowers unfurling their petals. That, that's very much the feel of Songe for me. Um, I love Songe, just bought a travel size, says Tamara. On first spray, it was just okay. Second spray, I loved it. Um, this is Dewey, says, I have one prized Barbie in drag as Ziggy era David Bowie. No way, seriously, as in, that's an actual Barbie, is it? What would she wear? <sighs> well, anybody's guess that that particular Barbie like that, maybe Alliage, maybe some, well, anyway. Let's not get sidetracked. Um, and this has got real, real substance to it as well. There's a very, very defined, strong, vanillic, woody base. And it is dreamy. I understand that the word songe means um, daydream. And it and it has got that dreamlike, slightly hallucinogenic quality. Um, and it's really, really beautiful. It also used to come, I don't know if it still does, it used to come as a really, really kind of decadent, unctuous body oil. But the body oil didn't seem to last very well in the sense that it would it would either start separating or solidifying. But while it lasted, it was a it was it was a good product. So 
Somebody already guessed what the male counterpart is going to be, but I'm afraid I haven't got the sort of supposed boy's bottle. This is this is um, Aude Adrienne, which was originally composed in 1981 by Annie Coutal herself and Francis Camay. And you may recognize this as the kind of older design bottle, but again, uh, regular viewers may know that this is something that I was given, I think, last year because they did it as a kind of limited edition reissue for the 40th anniversary of the brand. They they went back to the sort of more overtly old style bottle. Now, Eau d'Adrienne, of course, in many ways, a really, really classic cologne. So I think when Barbie is having her tropical daydreams, she wants her Ken to smell of really, really fresh, bright, refreshing citruses. Um, but she would probably get him the boy's bottle, although maybe maybe he would quite like this bottle. I don't know. Um, I think Ryan Gosling as Ken would probably like this bottle. I bought Sange last month, says Luciana, and love it. Um, I love the old style Goutal bottles, says Jenna. Yeah, so do I. I, I really, really do as well. Anyway, Eau d'Adrienne. Oh. Odin is amazing, actually smelling it after Songe, because it kind of just cuts right through Songe. So if you you if you were faced by a couple and one of them is wearing Songe and one is wearing Odin it would just be this fantastic contrast. And um, he steals her bottle anyway, says Maudlin. Oh yes, he probably does. Um, and this is this is really, really tart, sharp citrus, you know, real kind of lemon and lemon verbena, but it's all been dipped in just the tiniest little bit of sugar as well. Um, and it's green and bright and 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 equally solar. So they both channel the sun um, in slightly different ways. Michel says Honorien is the favorite scent of Leonardo DiCaprio. Really? Okay, but he's not Ken. Well, we need to know, we need to know what Ryan's favorite perfume is. Uh, DS says that for Bowie it would be Mugler's Alien. Yeah, probably. But I was trying to think of something more 70s. Um and again, this is another one I should wear more often. Like, I, I actually should just take this on holiday with me the next time we go away somewhere and just wear it because it's, it, it somehow manages to feel weightier than a lot of other colognes. And, and I think it's that verbena-like quality that I like about it. You know, it reminds me, smelling it now, of the Eau de Garlin. So for a real kind of classic citrusy cologne, an orangey cologne, I would reach for something like... Cologne Bigarade or Bigarade Concentré from, from Frederick Mal. But this is this is yellow. This is real, real day glow yellow. Um, Francesca says, I own Songe and Audadrienne and wear Audadrienne much more during the summer. Well, I, 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 I suppose I'm not surprised to read that. Ken needs something more beachy, says Lindsay. <laughs> he famously doesn't have a job. His job is beach. Um, Hmm, what would a beachy one be? Maybe sable then, sand. I mean, that's, but that's a very different sort of scent. That's heavily on immortel, although I did consider sable. Um, and then, or the Vetiver Ver Eau de Cologne from Goutal, says Mika Shoemaker. Yeah, insert your own Goutal here. Goutals are amazing for the summer. Ninfeo Mio is lovely too. That's the fig one, right, isn't it? Um, and also I wondered about Bois d'Adrienne, which is the uh, the kind of flanker that the brand did a couple of years ago. Really, really beautiful. It's like Eau d'Adrienne, but with the woodiness emphasized. Um, but yeah, this, this is this is what we've gone for. Okay, <clears throat> so we have done six, which means that this is a good point to mention that you're watching episode 385 of Love at First Scent with me, Persolaise, live on YouTube. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel after watching this video, you will never want to subscribe to this channel. But if there is anything at all that has made you want to subscribe to this channel, please do consider doing so. Please click on the little bell so that you get notifications about new videos. And if you feel Sorry for the fact that I have to resort to this pinkness. You may like to support my work, and you can find out how you can do that by looking for the link to my coffee page in the video description below. Do you know what? I found out the other day that apparently I'm not meant to call it coffee. I'm meant to say Kofi. But to me, that's a little bit too United Nations. And those those of you who are my age will know what that reference is. So I, d I, don't, know, I don't know if I can bring myself to say Kofi. Check out my Kofi page. I don't know. K-O-F-I. Um, and yes, uh, if, if you would like to make your own contributions to this list, feel free to do so. And if you are watching this video after having seen the film, because presumably lots and lots of you will be watching the film, um, then come back and let me know 
whether you think these recommendations have worked well and what your own recommendations would be. Okay, we are down to our final four. Um, so we've got one more brand pairing, and then the last two are the ones where I couldn't quite do a brand pairing, and, and I will explain why. Um, and let, okay, so we, we, we're going to go for it. This is from uh, 2017. Gosh, I've noted it here, but I can't believe the original came out in 2017, although that does make sense. This is from the one and only Christine Nagel. We had to do this from Hermès. It's Twilly, because I thought Twilly was also such a Barbie scent. But this is a kind of Barbie scent with brains. It's a, it's a girly feminine scent, absolutely, with, with thought and with intelligence. You know how I said that Lomi Deal is um, the really kind of interesting uh, mainstream masculine scent? Twilly, I think, is that equivalent for, um, for, for women. Um, there are two flankers. I've gone for the original here, although I gather that apparently we have got another flanker coming very, very soon that is going to be called something like Tutti Frutti, Twilly Tutti Frutti or something like that. I don't know if any of you out there have heard of this. And I thought, oh, that would have been perfect for this, but a little bit too early. So appropriate, says Hannah, even the bottle accessorizes. That's exactly what I thought. The bottle is cute. The, the little Twilly scarf is cute. Um, the Twilly bottle is very Barbie, says Sharon. Start thinking of what the male counterpart is going to be. Um, and, it, and it's a really, really great perfume because it's it came out round about the time when we were we had like a little bit of a mini tuberose revival with Gabrielle. And Margot Robbie actually ended up being the face of one of the Gabrielle scents, didn't she? Uh, not, not originally. Um, uh, Jen O says, Twilly, I remember buying it for the tiny Twilly alone back in the day. Ah, and this this is this is really interesting, you know, because as far as modern scents go, it's actually surprisingly abstract. I'm smelling it here and you, you get the kind of tuberose note, but there's lots of other stuff going on as well. There's that kind of gingery aspect to it. There's something a little bit more sweetly floral, maybe something rosy. Um, it's very, very carefree. It's it's very genuinely carefree, um, but not in a in, in a ditzy kind of way. Um, I, I think I think it's one of the best things that Najal has done for the brand. And again, I'm very, very pleased that it's been successful. And I'm guessing it's been successful, seeing as we've got a third flanker on the way. Um, oh, people's guess is Bellamy. Do you know I thought about Bellamy because of the name, but I but then I thought no that. She just would not choose that one for him. Um, Oda Pomplemousse says Mika. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Augivray says Jeff. She I don't know if you're going to be able to guess this one, actually. Oh, Mika says H24 since it's a Nagel. Oh, you guessed it. You guessed it. Let's do that one then. Now, my original thought was that actually probably Barbie would want Ken to wear Terre. Just, just original Terre d'Hermès. Um... But then, then I thought, no, let's actually go for something a little bit more modern, a little bit edgier. Um, and so and so I've, I've gone for H24, which was released in 2021. This is the EDT. We have also obviously got, as you know, an EDP as well. Rachel says H24 is Ken in business school. Twilly is Barbie freshman year college. <laughs> that is good. I wouldn't be surprised if a designer Barbie themed scent is on the horizon. Um, <laughs> yes, I, well, I would be surprised, I think. Um, H24 is a fun scent. I really, really like H24. A lot of people out there don't, surprisingly so. And you can see I have worn it quite a lot. Um, I I kind of like the fact, number one, I like the fact that it's, that it's got a kind of sort of 90s retro feel to it. Um, I've, I've said on this channel before that it reminds me a little bit of, oh, let's do a little bit of rearranging here. Actually, let's bring the smaller ones up front. Does that work? No, you can't really see that one now. Right, bear with me. Have we got this? Okay, I think this is looking good so far. It reminds me of um, <clears throat> Dior Hire, which again was a very, very kind of maligned scent back in the day. Um, it's got it's got a very definite kind of pear apple note at the top. 
same as Dior Higher. But then it goes into this kind of steamed, sage, hot metal feel, a lot of which comes down to a synthetic called um, sclarine, which is amazing to smell in isolation. Dior Hire was amazing, says Eco Jock. Thank you, Mr. P. I, I liked Dior Hire. Lots and lots of people don't. And I would love to be able to get my hands on some vintage Hire. Um, I wasn't so keen on the flanco. Do you remember after Hire, we had Hire Energy? Uh, but I, I enjoyed Hire. Um, and this has got, this is, this to me is really, really urban, really modern. Um, it's got that kind of glass-like, glass-like quality that I also sometimes associate with dihydromersinol. Um, you know, it, it, it's the kind of scent that I sometimes think Francis Kirchion would like to make for his brand when he tries to make these um, edgy, dynamic urban concoctions like the one that we had last year. Was it 724, which was apparently a repeat of one that he'd done for for a for a for an American department store. Um, but I, I absolutely enjoy wearing this. I will definitely be wearing it again this summer. I think I still prefer the EDT to the EDP, but but I'm a fan of the EDP as well. And I like the, um, the, uh, the, the, the products that come with it, you know, like the soaps and things like that. JJ says the olfactory equivalent of a modern skyscraper. Yes, that kind of thing. Nothing from Tom Ford for Barbie. I thought about Tom Ford, but you know, there are lots of brands I could have included. I, I definitely wanted to, you know, wondered about including a Dior. Um, I wondered about including a uh, Lutins, but then I thought probably Barbie has never even heard of Serge Lutins. Um, uh, Pink Sugar should be in the list, says Londe. But since we go for more quality, how about Coco Mademoiselle for Barbie? We've done our Chanel's. We've done our Chanel's, although she probably would have loved um, Coco Mademoiselle. Um, Barbie would remember wearing something from the 60s, perhaps from Coty, says this is Dewey. Yeah, you're not wrong. So... We are down to the final two. I can't believe I've actually presented eight Barbie and Ken perfumes and that there are two to go. So this is the one where I haven't done a brand pairing because the feminine scent was one that I absolutely had to include because again, it was one of the first ones that came to my mind round about the same time as Lipstick Rose. Um, and there isn't a kind of male counterpart to go, to go with it. Um, but I'm going to present the masculine one first. So I think that when Barbie wears this feminine scent that you will see as perfume number 10, she would like Ken to wear this. This is from 2019 from Moschino, which is a very, very Barbie brand composed by Jan Vanier. This is, of course, boy toy. And I know what a lot of you are going to say straight away. A lot of you are going to say that the perfect feminine counterpart to this would be the one that, you know, the pink one that's the bubble gum, and yes, you're not wrong, but but I wanted to go for this other feminine. So insert insert the bubble gum one into this list if you if you would like to. Um, figured toy boy, um, it's it's boy toy, right? It is no, it's toy boy. I said boy toy, didn't I? Was this is ah oh, oh goodness, yeah. This is this is toy boy. Um, Ken would wear Creed for the kids. Says. Oh, I'm wearing it right now, says Maché, where you smell amazing. And I think she would like the fact that um, he, she would be giving Ken this bottle. And I think the sort of slightly dubious ironies of this bottle would be completely lost on her. Um, but Barbie is so Moschino. Yeah, she definitely is, isn't she? Let's smell this again. I, this is the one where I said that, you know, I think I included it um, in my list of the best of that particular year. And I hardly ever wear it, it which is just so wrong. Actually, let's pop that on here. Let's get rid of, let's get rid of Lego Persolais and pop that here because these are quite big bottles we've got here today. So you could see that one as well. And it's going to be tricky making room for the last one because it's an awkward shaped bottle. There's a clue. So um, Moschino did a great Barbie collection some years ago, says Maudlin. Did they? I didn't know that. Um, and uh, I was thinking these are some elevated tastes for Barbie and Ken then finally a Moschino. Well, there you go. Anyway, so this from Monsieur Vanier is a really, really great peppery, pimento, sort of black pepper and chili, woody rose for men um, with a hint of leather. 
just fantastic. Really, really so great. Um, Jeff says, is it going to be Angel as number 10? Oh, you will find out soon enough. Um, and yeah, may maybe this is actually almost too good for Ken, but no, no, let, let, let's, 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 let's let let's let um, let Ken have it. Um, I picture Ken would wear Sauvage EDT or something of that kind. No, I said that they have to be perfumes that I personally don't mind endorsing, okay? And when this came out, you know, marketed as a masculine, I was just sort of so pleased. And I, I have no idea how it's done, actually. I gather it is still around. Um, it certainly had a very, very provocative advertising campaign. Um, and it manages to keep everything in such a great balance. You know, the pepperiness lasts for ages. The rosiness lasts all the way through. And it's a really, really kind of dark, crimson, woody, leathery rose. It's it's just great. It's really, really great. And had it come out from another brand, you know, with a sort of more serious name and a more serious bottle, it probably would have been like a massive hit. But I remember when people were smelling it um, at the time, when, when it was released, coming to me immediately sort of saying, oh, my God, have you smelled have you smelled the Moschino? You really, really need to, uh, to, to, to smell it. Um, and I'm I'm glad I did. OK. And so finally, this one had to be on here, folks. And, and and I'm sure a lot of you have figured it out already, because in some ways it is the original sugar bomb. It is the sugar bomb, um, which is probably responsible for all of the other sugar bombs that we have at the moment. It is, of course, from 1992, Mugler Angel. This is the EDP here. This is a bottle that I was given. Can you see it's got my name in, engraved there on the glass? Maybe, maybe Barbie would have her name engraved on it as well. This is a refillable one composed by Olivier Cresp and Yves de Chiris. Um, it, it had to be Angel, didn't it? You know, the perfume that a lot of us love and a lot of us love to hate. Um, you know, the, the kind of scent where you think you will be quite happy if you never smell it again, and yet you kind of have to acknowledge that it is genius. I wonder where I could... Oh, that's just going to have to rest on here somehow, because that this bottle doesn't stand up, so you can't see it, but anyway. And Barbie is a star, so perfect bottle, says Maudlin. There you go. Thank you very much. Flower Bomb is a better choice, though it's really bad, says Kim. Yeah, you see, I'm not a fan of Flower Bomb, but that kind of thing, I would actually much prefer Angel or Petite Robe Noire. Um, the worst bottle shape, says Pavitra. It is awkward. It is a it is an awkward bottle shape. Anyway, Angel, for the two of you out there who have never smelt it, Angel is considered to be the scent that created the, the, the taste for gourmand perfumes, a taste that shows no sign of diminishing. We we could we could have a debate, we could have an argument as to whether it really was the first gourmand. And a lot of the time it's called the first gourmand. I think that is definitely up for debate. <clears throat> because at the beginning of the century, um, people were playing around with fruity notes. You know, the, there was there was a perfume called uh, Fruit Défendu, which was very definitely fruit front and center. And even a, a little bit before Angel, we had Cashmere from Chopin, which which also presented that kind of heavily gourmand scent. But Angel, I guess, was the first one that really went out, went all out with the with the caramelized notes um, and the vanillic notes um, and pushed the diffusiveness like crazy. What's interesting about it, which I think a lot of a lot of brands that have tried to copy it have, have lost sight of, is that it, Angel was also always about the patchouli, right? And, you know, smelling it now. The patchouli in this EDP is really, really strong, really striking and kind of funky, actually, uh, funkier than I remember it. So, yes, it's got that kind of coffee aspect to it. It's got the 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 ethyl maltol, strong, 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 burnt caramel feel to it. But the patchouli is what gives it guts. Um, so this is this is the gourmand with guts. This is the, the this is the sugariness with gutsiness. Um, if Barbie was to borrow something from my collection, says Helen, maybe Lancôme Idol Nectar. It has a popcorn note. That would be a good one. Or sunscreen. Uh, sunscreen. But we would bond over Angel. Fair enough. Uh, Sister Parfum says, I used to badly judge anyone wearing it, which represented quite a lot of people. It was the unapologetic perfume by definition. Yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, Sister Parfum again says, maybe Eco Jock. Oh, why? What did Eco Jock say? I can't see the comment. Um, 
is it too cloying for you? Ah, okay. Amika says, Ken would wear ultra zest. Yeah, I wondered about, you know, pairing it with one of the Amen flankers. But in the end, I thought, no, I want I wanted to include the Moschino in there. Modern Angel is quite undistinguished. Maybe the extra is still what it once was, says Kim. Ah, okay. No fracas, says DJ. Not this time. We could, we could have included so many. Actually, I better label this. Not that I think I'm going to have any trouble remembering what Angel smells like. So, phew, we've done it. Now, let's actually um, restore a little bit of normality. How's this going to work? I'm going to look so boring now in... Oh, gosh, that looks terribly dull. No, 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 no. Let's go back to the other. Let's go back to that just, just for the end of... Yeah, that's much better, isn't it? I can get used to this. I can get... just reduce the shine there a little bit and, 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 and everything will be fine. Um... Okay, thank you very much for watching. Now, we are nearly coming to our Persele's summer break. I will try to do as many videos as possible before we go on the break. Tomorrow, so that's tomorrow, the 10th of July, Monday, the 10th of, the, uh, 10th of July at 5.30 p.m. UK time, there is going to be an interview with the folks from Les Andes Modables who are going to be joined by their perfumer, Antoine Lee, and we're going to be talking about their latest release, Patchouli Noisette, also a kind of gourmand patchouli, although not sort of sweetly gourmand. Um, I will do my very, very best to do a video for you next weekend as well, although I think it may be on the Saturday rather than on the Sunday. Um, and perhaps squeeze another one in there somewhere, and then that will kind of be it. But for now, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for putting up with the pinkness. Thanks very much for uh, the fun conversation. And always remember to channel your inner Barbie. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.